Okay, so personally, I think the best roads to use full self-driving on are business highways, kind of like what I'm on right now, where it's not a true highway. You've got businesses right along the side. You are driving a little bit faster, but there might be a lot of lights. There might be a little bit of winds and curves like this. But again, I think that this is one of the best roads to use full self-driving on. And I also think that major highways, interstates, expressways, parkways are probably the best to use it on because of course you're just sitting there you're going straight you don't have any lights you're just kind of sitting there in between the lines so to me full self-driving and autopilot does the best when you're on these types of roads but personally <laughs> I've had a lot of issues with full self-driving on the highway to the point where I actually prefer to just use the standard autopilot that comes with the car when I'm on the highway and the first thing is going to be on display here right off the bat which is the fact that it waits until the last second to merge onto the highway so right now we're looping around we're going onto the Atlantic City Expressway from Route 70 I think was down there but we're jumping onto the AC Expressway here and when we go to actually merge the car is going to drive super slow and it's also going to sit here in the right lane until it has to merge at the very last second, which gives me anxiety as the passenger essentially in the car here, uh, but also it just doesn't make much sense to me. So you can see that as we jump onto the highway here, it's gonna stay until the very end and follow the line over. Now this actually did a much better job and I now look like an idiot for even saying it, but I do have to say that on previous drives, when I go and when I get onto the highway and you have, you know, let's say a half a mile of runway until the lane that you jump onto the highway on runs out, it'll wait until that very last second and then have you merge over at the last second, right? Now here, it's actually doing a great job. And honestly, I like the fact that it's proving me wrong in this sense because it's taking charge. It's making me go a little bit over the speed limit, which I prefer and I enjoy. It's putting me right in the middle lane. So let me just say right off the bat that I'm absolutely eating my words. But now that it's done all of that work, right? Now that we've gotten onto the highway and whatnot, and now that we're right here in this middle lane, barring any changes, we're pretty much going to be using standard autopilot minus automatic lane changes, right? So when I'm in a situation like this, where if you look at the map where I'm driving to down the shore, we pretty much have a straight shot on the highway going all the way down. Personally, I would prefer to just use, I'm gonna get over to the left lane to demonstrate something. Um, personally, I would rather just use autopilot. It's a little bit less strict, which is nice. But here we have some construction coming up in front of us. And really the main reason that I got over is just to see what the car would do. There's going to be construction directly in front of us. We need to merge over to the right-hand lane. There's a car in the way. It's right to our back right. The car needs to merge. That car behind us gave us a little bit of room, which was nice. Cool. So it merged at the last second, right? So, so that's a little bit of an example of what I'm talking about here, right? Now, obviously we can see the construction as human beings driving here, but the car just sees a bunch of cones and might not understand that we're in a construction zone, but it waits until that very last second in order to get over. Now, let's say that there was a vehicle in the way and the car that's behind us right now didn't move out of the way. You're then going to be potentially hitting the barrier in front of you. The car is going to slam on the brakes or you're going to end up moving into the car that's to, in this case, the right of us. So to me, I would love more preemptive merging. I would love the merging to be a little bit more smooth. I prefer to merge towards the end when I'm driving manually. So if I have somebody that is in the way and if I know somebody's driving a little bit slower, I'll speed up a little bit and merge at the last second to get in front of them so that I don't end up stuck behind them. But in a scenario where the car is driving and it's doing all the work for me and where the car is, um, where the car is uh, still learning, I would much rather it take preemptive precaution to merge earlier. Now, I think that this just comes down to learning the roads a little bit better, you know, for Tesla software, and also being able to actually read signs better. So as it stands right now, the sign reading is very limited. So, you know, I would love for to be able to, to read a sign like that to know that people are merging on in order to get over, right? I'd love for it to read, um, you know, signs that say there's gonna be a construction zone and showing which lane is closed. So of course, 
back there you saw that the left lane was closed and it gave me an indication to get over but the car isn't able to read a sign like that to make that preemptive move now i just made a video about the difference between hardware 3 and hardware 4 and i wonder if it's going to be a camera resolution issue right like are we going to need a higher fidelity camera system in order to better read intricate signs on the side of the road reading speed limits is one thing seeing stop signs and stop lights is another thing because they're very big and prominent and easy to see right i mean a stop sign is very distinctive but when it comes down to some of these construction um these construction uh signs when it comes down to a sign back there that fines are doubled in a 65 mile an hour zone when it comes down to things like that will we need a higher fidelity camera system in order to pick them up so I mentioned that I have some issues and gripes with full self-driving on the highway, the first of which is the merging. I think merging in general, whether you're getting onto the highway, whether there's a construction zone, the merging just overall needs to be better. I also think that when you're on the highway, and if I'm in a scenario right now where I wanted to get over into the right-hand lane, or maybe if I want to get into the left-hand lane because I want to go a little bit faster, sometimes it actually surprises me. It'll speed up, it'll squirt in front of a car, and it'll just continue on with its way, and it does a really good job at fitting yourself over but man the area that i drive in the philly drivers the jersey drivers can be a little bit rough to deal with and they're not going to let you in for anything so you might have your turn signal on and somebody in the midwest might be like yeah go ahead and get over but in the northeast you need to drive a little bit more aggressive in order to really get by and get where you want to go on the highway in a sufficient time um, so, you know, in, in a scenario like where I might be on this highway and I want to get over in the left hand lane, but there's just a steady stream of traffic, you know, I notice that sometimes when getting over, it can be a little bit difficult to find its way over. It'll put its turn signal on and try to be courteous. But at that point, somebody sees a turn signal and speeds up to try and not let you in. So the merging is something that I kind of have a fairly large issue with uh, just across the board. I also think that with full self driving, the speed can be an issue. So. I've said this in the past about speed, which right now, the reason I'm getting over is because I've got a car sitting behind me. I know that I have the assertive, uh, the assertive mode on. So if you look here, I'm, I'm on assertive, but I feel like it just doesn't do a good job of understanding the situation that it is. And I mentioned the speed. That'll be my third point. Let me go over just kind of its awareness here on the highway. For me, I feel like I need to be a little bit of a babysitter and still take over when certain things are happening. So for example, sitting in the left lane there with all of the room over the right lane, it should notice that the car in front of me that was to the right was going faster. It should notice that this car on my left was approaching from the back and make a maneuver to get over into the right lane to let him pass. Again, I know that I'm on assertive, but it doesn't mean that you should just blatantly slow people down in the left lane. I want to be assertive at my speed right now, which is 80 miles an hour. Other cars around me are going to drive slower. Other cars are going to inevitably drive faster. So keep me within my speed, but get over, right? I've noticed even when driving on some of these highways, now kind of getting into the speed uh, topic, is that even though I want to go a specific speed, it'll actually go less than the speed that I determined. Now, this is more so on some of the windy interstates that we have in Pennsylvania. So 76, for example, can be very windy going into the city. So I can understand if I tell the car I want to do 85 miles an hour when I'm on the highway, it's going to say, well, we probably shouldn't be doing 85. Here's what I can handle, and it'll go a specific speed. But on a road like this, there should be no reason that there's any sort of speed limitations or anything like that. Now for me, typically when I do these full self-driving videos, I don't do highway driving because it's honestly fairly boring. Like this is going to get me to my destination. No problem at all. It's going to drive on the highway. It's going to sit here in the middle. It's not going to make any errors because highway driving is really what autopilot and full self-driving has been perfected to do. Now as full self-driving improves, we see a lot of changes being made on the back road areas where there's signage, where there's turns and curves needed. Um, so that's really why I focus a lot of my full self-driving videos on you know, the back roads, the windy, the windier interstates, the, uh, you know, the, the business highways, things like that, where there's more at play, where with this, I mean, I've done it before on cross country trips. You'll literally just sit with autopilot or full self driving turned on for hours and hours. Um, and even with toll booths, I know that tolls can be a little bit of an issue. So that's kind of something I like to check out, but on the expressway here on, in these left lanes, as you keep going through the toll, it's one of those express tolls <clears throat> that just kind of sits here in this lane, will kind of bump you over, go through the toll, and then keep going. Now, here in Philly, 
we do have some tolls where you don't have the express lanes and you have to actually go through the individual toll booth and it just it can't do that like it just it totally freaks out every time that you get there it will try to kind of divert you to go through one of the open areas but typically like it'll bring me through a cash only lane even though i have easy pass which is our electronic tolling around here um so yeah uh, for me, like when I talk about my complaints with full self driving on the highway, it really is nitpicky. Like it just gets down to, uh, you know, the car understanding where it's at and just kind of understanding the traffic around it and what it needs to do in order to, you know, get you to your destination safely and not piss people off around you. Um, I think that it also needs to get much, much, much better at merging. I think it just overall needs to take a better precautionary, uh, you know, uh, attempt at getting you on the highway or moving you away from construction so that it doesn't wait for the very, very last moment where really anything can happen when the car is trying to drive itself. Um, I'm going to get in the left lane here because it's the left two lanes that kind of pull you through that easy pass. Um, that was a nice turn right there, though. I mean, the merging is great when you're trying to go lane to lane. Uh, you know, it'll give a nice buffer. It'll kind of move you over nice and smooth. Put the turn signal on turn it off. But it's really the merging from, like, a slower road onto a heavier road, heavier traffic road. Uh, and it's also the construction zones that I have a big issue with merging. Um, the speed can also be an issue on specific highways. Uh, and then, fine, uh, I think I'm just now talking in circles. But it was the awareness on the road as well. So those three things are kind of my big gripe and it's kind of why sometimes I prefer to just throw on autopilot you can get away with being on autopilot and not paying attention to the road so like you can just turn off or you can close the camera which I have a camera cover up here and like from there it's not as strict so like I can go and look at the screen and I can make a change in my music or I can make a change in my uh, my destination if I needed to or look for a coffee stop on my route whereas with full self driving man if you take your eyes off the road for I swear two or three seconds it'll instantly start beeping at you so you can get away with a little bit more on autopilot um and that's why you know i prefer sometimes when i'm doing these long drives these long hauls where i'm going to be on the highway for 50 60 miles like let's say the new jersey turnpike i'll just throw autopilot on instead of full self-driving um so yeah this is really one of the first like highway full self drives I featured on the channel. I think that there's like no major issues at all. I don't think that there's any really major improvements that need to be made with the highway version of full self driving. It really just comes down to how this is going to get me to my destination when I finally get off the highway, when I finally get to the shore and I'm going to my destination. Um, so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts on highway full self driving. Do you guys experience the same issues that I do with the merging and with the uh, with the uh, speed and with the awareness? I know that there's a couple of areas around me, back where I live, not here in Jersey, that I could demonstrate some of the other merging issues that I have if you'd be interested uh, because that's something I think that needs to be improved and then we're pretty much golden here on the highway. But yeah, please let me know your thoughts. Do you want to see more driving? So the car is, it's like stopping, stopping a little bit. It sees that this person here has their turn signal on and wants to get over and it kind of like was hesitating there. So the hesitation is something that's also annoying. It just dropped me down to 75, trying to maintain the speed of flow for traffic. That's another thing when it comes to speed. It tries to maintain the speed for traffic and it'll limit my maximum speed of 75, but it's like, hey, and there it's trying to get over, but somebody is like not gonna let me over. So there's a lot of these little things that they can continue to improve and I can continue to nitpick all day long. But at the end of the day, let me know, do you wanna see more highway full self driving videos or are you in agreement with me that this has pretty much been almost perfected at this point? Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and as always, I'll catch you in the next one.